In the last episode, apart from explaining the research interests in post-conflict reconstruction and peace building, Arbenita and Raymond share the experience networking while in graduate school here in Japan. Like me, they are also members of the Academic Council on the United Nations System or ACON's Tokyo Liaison Office and the Global Peace Building Association of Japan or GPHA. These are organizations of students, researchers, and practitioners interested in global governance and peace building, respectively. Arbenita and Raymond actively help or lead in coordinating the events and activities of these organizations, and they also disseminate the research through these events and activities. So I think from my conversation with them, it's the right time to talk about academic networking for this episode. Scholars Unbound is a bi-monthly podcast or video series that showcases the voices of scholars who know no boundaries when it comes to the pursuit of knowledge. You will hear insights from their experiences as international scholars and how these influence their research, hoping to inspire future scholars to be fearless, global, and unbound. I'm your host, Dalia Simangan. I used to dread networking, and I still do once in a while until now. I consider myself an extroverted introvert. I would always prefer to be by myself, and I truly enjoy my alone time. But when it's necessary for me to get out of my comfort zone, I try my best to do what's expected of me, to face the risk of criticism or failure for the sake of learning and being better at what I do. In academia and in many other professional settings, networking is a crucial component of a career, being able to speak publicly, being comfortable mingling in a group, being able to draw in people. These are desirable traits. And we often hear that refrain that networking is important. We have to do networking. We just have to do it, whether we like it or not. Some of our guests in the past episodes also reminded us of the benefits of networking, not just for our careers, but also for the development and advancement of our research ideas. Personally speaking, overcoming my introversion opened opportunities for me to collaborate with brilliant academics and become part of organizations or associations with members whom I share research interests with, like the Aiken Tokyo Liaison Office. The professional relationships I cultivated so far helped me develop and implement research proposals, which are in turn key components of my academic career. I wouldn't be able to even imagine implementing those plans or ideas without the guidance and contributions of people I have met through networking. But how do I overcome this introversion? How can I expand my network, especially when I'm battling imposter syndrome? It's difficult to consider myself as someone who is good at networking or who enjoys networking. I'm still a work in progress, and I still need to overturn my stumbling blocks from time to time. I'm also aware that we have different backgrounds and circumstances. My experience will be different from yours, and your future circumstances, even my future circumstances, might be completely different from now. But I just want to share a few tips for networking if you're an introvert like me, both for my personal reflection and in the hopes that this may resonate with some of you. First tip, start small. What I mean by small here is not something insignificant. What I mean by small here is starting with steps that won't require much energy, especially for an introvert. You can start by creating a personal website, a LinkedIn profile, or a Twitter account in that order. If you're not comfortable sharing details of your personal life, especially in social media, then don't. Don't use these platforms for these. Use these platforms instead for things that are mainly career-related. I do have my personal website, LinkedIn profile, and Twitter account. I keep them updated as much as possible, and I use them mainly for sharing my research interests or my activities. I tweet or blog or post about my publications, the conferences I have attended, the seminars I have given, or the awards I have received. In the beginning, I felt like I had nothing to share. I didn't have publications yet when I was a PhD student. My conference and seminar attendance was very limited then. But here is where the more important value of social media presence comes in. That is following individuals who can be potential collaborators or mentors, following works or publications that are relevant to my research, following organizations or announcements that can open opportunities for me. 
In fact, I found many of the jobs I applied for through social media announcements. Notwithstanding some of the drawbacks of social media, I think it's important to keep in mind that these platforms are not just platforms for self-promotion. They are more importantly platforms for us to be in the know, to stay updated of the developments in our respective disciplines, or at least be aware of what's shaping public conversations. Because networking is not just networking with people, it's above all networking with ideas. My second networking tip is to be grateful. Yes, that is to say thank you. I sometimes send a thank you message to the author of an article that inspired me or the speaker in a conference or seminar that challenged or confirmed my thoughts or ideas. There are two main reasons why I do this. First is I want them to know that I'm interested in their work, that someone from the Global South is engaging with a scholarship especially when it's a Western-centric one. This will also somehow put me in the radar when they are seeking a collaborator. I'm humbled to have received a couple of such messages before, and I'm really happy knowing that someone out there is interested in my work. And these individuals are always in my mind whenever I chance upon opportunities for collaboration. So this is really a two-way win-win networking opportunity. And this relates to my second reason. I want to thank people who have been instrumental to the way I think and do research. You know, much of what we do, like reviewing articles, guest lecturing, organizing events, these are thankless tasks. That's why I think it just feels right to say thank you, even without the purpose of networking in mind. I would be happy to receive a response. But if they don't, I don't take it to heart. I understand that they are busy people who probably receive a lot of messages in a day. That's why there's a caveat to this tip. I don't think it's nice to send an unsolicited message solely for the sake of networking. It shouldn't be the main reason, but rather an add-on value to expressing gratitude. In doing so, I don't feel like I'm networking at all, but I'm just showing my appreciation more personally. This brings me to my third tip, which is somehow related to sending thank you messages, and that is sending cold emails. Maybe you are telling me now, that's just weird, Dahlia, I don't have the courage to send cold emails. I understand this concern given the proliferation of spam emails, such as those from predatory journals or publishers, but hear me out here. I think by sending a well-crafted, thoughtful, genuine, and polite email or message, I have nothing to lose. The worst outcome would be a non-response. And it's always encouraging to receive responses from people I admire or whose work has been influential to mine. Something to keep in mind, though, is not to send emails that are vague or filled with praises. From the other end, it would be great to receive a simple thank you, but a message or email that's strewn with words of admiration is quite off-putting too. The same with vague emails. For example, I have received messages of something along the lines of, I'm interested in your research and would like to explore opportunities for collaboration. Okay, but how? I don't really know how to respond to those messages. It would be great to read something more specific, like what area of my research you're interested in, and what are the specific ways you have in mind for collaboration? For example, co-authoring a paper that you started conceptualizing, invitation to join a project team that will craft a research funding proposal. A vague message hinders an open communication but a more specific one is more likely to spark interest or get a response, whether it's a yes or a no. For an introvert like me, I'm more comfortable sending personalized emails than, say, introducing myself out of the blue during conferences. I cringe every time I remember how awkward I was during those in-person self-introductions during conference drinks, for example. My fourth and final tip, at least for this episode, is I believe also the most important one, and that is to cultivate my existing network, my collaborative relationships. Remember, it's not the number of people in your network that matters, but the depth of your connection with them.
Whenever I chance upon opportunities that require collaboration, I'm more likely to consult with or seek my trusted colleagues or people I work with ease in the past. I know we are always told that networking is important for our academic career, but from my personal experience, I have also encountered an individual whom I approached with the genuine intention of forging a research collaboration. And it was the only time it ended up with me truly regretting approaching this person in the first place. People are different, with different intentions and personalities, and different levels of self-confidence. So although networking is important, it's wise to do so with caution, always. And although the benefits far outweigh the risks, we also have to be a little bit selective on who do we want to be a part of our network or whose network we want to be a part of. That's why I think perhaps sometimes it's better to cultivate rather than expand our network. These are just some of the things I have learned from networking as an introvert. I don't intend to preach, I don't want to preach. What works for me will not always work for everyone else. But I hope to some extent this gives you an idea of what to try or at least an awareness that you are not alone in experiencing networking anxiety. I do too, often, especially as an early career researcher. I think knowing that this is normal and this is something we can talk about somehow helps. So I also want to know tips you might have and wish to share with us. Or if you just want to reach out to a fellow introvert, you can contact me through scholarsunbound at gmail.com or join our Facebook group, Scholars Unbound. Network with us. We are a friendly, supportive, and positive but not toxic community of students and scholars from minority groups or from the Global South or interested in the Global South. I hope you enjoyed this episode and until the next one, stay safe and healthy. Thank you for listening to this episode. Please consider leaving a comment or rating at iTunes or any of your preferred podcast hosting platforms. For details about upcoming episodes and how to support the Scholars Unbound project, visit daliasimangan.com slash scholarsunbound with the link in our show notes.